Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you for that kind introduction, Anthony. Um, I've been asked today just to speak a little bit about my journey with Parkinson's and what that's meant um, for me over the years. It's always a bit of a challenge um, as to what to speak about when I come and talk to people like yourselves. You're all part of the area of Parkinson's. Um, I reflect back, I suppose, a couple of years ago, I was in the back of the car with my youngest daughter. Uh, we were off to talk at that night and Zoe said to me at the time, she said, Dad, where are we off to? And I said, oh, look, we've got 200 doctors to talk to about Parkinson's and about what a patient with Parkinson's experiences. And she looked straight at me and said, Dad, you're talking? <laughs> and I went, yeah, 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 I'm talking. That was a fair confidence booster before the evening started. <laughs> And she looks again at me and says, Dad, don't talk about yourself. You're not that interesting. <laughs> and that was one killer blow. Then she followed it up with another one, said, Dad, don't tell your jokes. They're not that funny. <laughs> so my half hour talk's now about a five minute talk. And she follows it up with, Dad, do you want to know something to talk about? And I'm, I'm grasping for things at this point. She said, talk about me. So as you can see, Zoe's our humble one in the family to be able to come, uh, come away with. So what drives me, I've really got four drivers, family, friends, robotics, which is our business, and a cure for Parkinson's. For myself, incredibly fortunate, I think, uh, to have such a loving wife and three really special kids. Uh, all very different children, I suppose. Um, one that would think the rules are the rules and sticks exactly by them to the other one thinks the rules are merely guidelines, possibly to be followed by other people, but not himself. <laughs> so it's a difference in what we do. For myself, in teaching them, I learn a lot about myself. Uh, it's seven years since I was diagnosed with Parkinson's, uh, five years since we set up Shake It Up to be able to make a difference and how to fund Parkinson's at places like right here at the Garvin, who had three grants with ourselves and the Fox Foundation. For myself, it was a launch of a foundation, something that we really didn't want, something that I didn't have any experience in at that point in time. Um, we asked the kids the night before, would you like to be involved in the launch? Uh, Joshy said, Dad, would you like my support? And I said, mate, I'd love it. And he said, right, I'm on board. Phoebe, or Zoe at the time said, Dad, will there be cameras there? And I said, yeah, there will. <laughs> Zoe just wants to be famous. And Phoebe at the time was four, and she said, Look, Dad, if those two are coming, I don't know what it is, but I'm coming too. <laughs> so the other two did different things on the da that night before to prepare for that next day in case there was the opportunity to talk to the media. It went really well. You know, all the main networks were there. We launched a foundation. And then we're sitting down, and Phoebe was sitting on my knee at the end of the, the day, and the TV cameras come over, swung straight to Phoebe. And you go, oh, no, what's going to happen here? The day's gone really well. And they are, swing straight to Phoebe and they go, are you proud of your dad? And I go, oh, no, this could go anywhere. <laughs> and she looks down and she said, yes, very proud. And you're in one of those days, just call it off, stop the fight, that's enough. And she, then they throw to her again and they say, is your dad your hero? And she looks straight down the barrel and goes, nah. <laughs> I asked her later, who is a hero? And of course, it's a mum. Um, and sometimes you should just leave it at that. And I said, Phoebs, why is mum the hero? And I, I thought there'd be a really special reason. She comes out, she helps me clean my room. <laughs> so for myself, Bulletproof Healthy at the age of 44, got up to speak in 2009 at a planning day for our company, who I'm CEO and founder of. Paper started to shake in my hand. Half the head's just going, hey, tough it up, mate. Other half the head's going, what the hell is happening here? Um, so I got all the way through the day, shook at different times, walked the room, couldn't get myself comfortable. Um, at the end of the day, I went to take a, a beer off one of our actual waitresses' trays and I turned it into a washing machine. Couldn't hold it in one hand. It turned that quickly for me in that day. Um, it, diseases progressed slowly from then for myself, but it was a life-changing event just right there and then. So I went through all the normal tests, the doctors, um, went to the neuro, and I always remember the neuro saying, Clyde, at D-Day, Clyde, you're lucky you've got Parkinson's. And I went, man, I'm a pretty positive guy, but you're going to have to help me here because I don't see anything good about having Parkinson's. 
He said, well, your two choices were a brain tumour or motor neurone. And I said, mate, I'm starting to feel the love. The Parkinson's may not be the worst thing I've, I've got in my life. So it was a journey from there. What do we want to do? Uh, I promised myself two things before I put the key in the car. I'm a great believer in strategy. I'm a great believer in action that actually takes on strategy. My two questions for myself was, could I accept it? And the resounding answer for myself was yes. And that second question was for myself before I was allowed to leave was could I, what was I going to do about it? And it was pretty clear to myself I was going to find ways to step towards a cure. Understanding it wasn't a simple thing by any means. And so many people, like the good people at the Garvin, have been working on it for many years and slowly chipping away at the problem. So I found, looked around Australia, I found institutes like right here at the Garvin. Fantastic people, super smart all limited, I suppose, in their financial side. So what we really had a three-step process. If we wanted a way to treat the disease, we had to do more research. If we wanted to do more research, we needed to raise more funds. And that was the area that I saw myself fitting into. I, went to, I was working in the States at about that time in a robotic solar project we'd won over there uh, internationally. Uh, I went to see the Fox Foundation and come away from the Fox Foundation going, those are the guys that can help us in Australia because I'm a really proud Aussie. I think we punch hell of, hell of a lot above our weight internationally, but we need to give our team a fair enough chance to be able to do that. So the Fox Foundation, we communicated with for 12 months. Uh, their CEO at the time, Katie Hood, said, look, Clyde, you're going to have to come and convince the board. She said, I'm convinced, but the board needs to be convinced. I've never done anything that you're asking ever, anytime, anywhere else in the world. So we went across there, my wife and myself, and poor old Kaz is not as comfortable as presenting in front of people as myself. We were going up in the lift, the big bulls downstairs, the 50 floors up in the middle of New York City, and Kaz is absolutely sweating. And I said, Kaz, what's wrong? She said, what if they don't like us? I said, mate, we leave. Um, got up, I presented in regards to, so walked in, there was 50 people around the builder room table, which is a Fox advisory board, and Michael was there. Did our presentation. You know, fortunately, I saw Michael stand up and I'm going, oh no, I hope he's not leaving. Stood up and he said, Clyde, I can see you've got a purity of motive, you got my vote. And with that, we knew we had the other 49. I almost danced on his table at that point in time. So for myself, it, the disease has progressed. And what has that journey been like? Uh, it's definitely been many, many challenges. And I need to be careful on how I present it. For myself, I've always been very fortunate. From an engineering background, it's about what issues do we have and how do we resolve it. And a very, very good problem solver. I've been taught by very, very good people. But other people don't have that in their life. And it's to those people we owe real hope, real hope, not false hope, when their lives stand still, as it does to many people with Parkinson's. What have we achieved in that period of time? In the five years, we've got 5.8 million into, committed to people committed to research right here in Australia, partnered with the Fox Foundation. That, that continues to move along. For myself, I suppose, I always reflect back to that day. The day, I, the Monday morning after the sun, Sunday, I was actually I had the symptoms. Went to see my doctor that morning. S saw him, and I was realistically there for a short hit and spin meeting, find out what the issue was and move on. When, I, when he went through the actual symptoms and we went and did all our normal tests, which you'd be all familiar with, um, we ca he had that oh no written all over his face. And he said, Clyde, I need to refer you to someone. And he didn't want to tell me what. And I said, look, doc, just hit me with what it is. He said, Clyde, you had all the symptoms of young onset Parkinson's. And that didn't really worry me at the time. I said, yeah, that's all okay. Tell me what we're going to do about it. He said, Clyde, there is no cure. And that was a bell ringer for myself at that point in time. So I said, look, can you spend five minutes just to teach me and tell me what does it mean to myself and going forward? Uh, I remember looking at his screen in, in regards to, look, what does the disease mean? And I need to make sure this is Clyde's view of the world. It's not the general view of the world. I remember walking through those areas, and the first one was actually tremor. And I, the way that presents to myself, if you remember back, I'm a problem solver. Uh, what's the issue? Um, I tremor for myself. I said, geez, 
So I go to the pub with my mates, I'm going to have to buy pints now because I'm only going to have a midi by the time I get it back to the table. <laughs> the next one on the list was in regards to ensuring that there was loss of confidence. For someone like myself, I can afford to lose half my confidence and still be pretty <laughs> bloody comfortable. Sorry, I just lost my way a little bit there. It's one of the things that really pisses me off about Parkinson's. <laughs> it's that short-term memory lapse. I could start a conversation at any point in time in my prior life and always be confident I have the answer at the end of it. Now, in Parkinson's, you, you miss it and you miss it by those few seconds that are horribly valuable at times like this. So thank you for actually sh sh being kind and sharing it with me. What makes my symptoms worse is cold, tide and pressure. Cold I can do something about tired I can do something about, and pressure I can do something about as well. Pressure for myself is normally watching the kids play sport um, it, because it, you're emotionally involved. Uh, one quick one for, with the kids, you know, one thing that really does make it point, and pointing it for myself, I was walking down the street last year with the kids away for, for Christmas holidays. It was cold, bad, I was tired because we'd been out all day. I was holding Phoebe's hand and um, I started to shake and Phoebe pulls on my finger and says, Dad, Parkinson's. And you look at her and go, yeah, mate, Parkinson's. And she walks about 50 metres down the road and she pulls my finger again. And I look down at her and she said, Dad, I hope they never test me for Parkinson's. And you go, oh, man, where's this going? Suck it in. And you said, ask good questions, get good answers. I said, Phoebe, why would you ask that? She said, you know how when you were diagnosed you spilled a drink? I said, yeah, Phoebe. She said, I spill a lot of drinks. They're bound to think I've got Parkinson's. <laughs> so I'd like to hand over to the two main people, or three main people today. So mine was just to do an intro. Thank you for being so kind to have a listen and appreciate it.